mailbag time again. Got some stuff here. I've got no idea what's in here, we'll find out. Don't forget, I've got links down below for things I can give you links for. If you press anything. Oh, right, okay. So I was working on a project recently on motorhome. And I needed some of these. Anyway, what they are, it's a USB extender. So that's a transmitter, that's a receiver. You park a USB on this end, and the Ethernet on that end, USB this end, Ethernet that end, and use an Ethernet cable connect between your computer and your device. So if you want to plug a keyboard or a mouse in remotely, you can do that for an RJ45 port. This is a standard Ethernet cable. Now there are some compromises and stuff like that, but it's it's basically alright, you can use it. I think it's like 100 metres maximum or something like that on these things. So if you've got a, a computer you need to access remotely, using a keyboard and mouse, something like that, or a touch screen, this is what I've used before as a touch screen, then you can do that. Now, this is just a USB only, but there are HDMI versions as well. Right, so this one's also USB powered, because it's got no USB port on there. The, it's got no power port on there. This end that does need to be powered. Yeah, that's one option. Now, the other type you can get is with a HDMI port as well. So you get HDMI port with USB on it as well. And those are obviously restricted in HDMI, you can't put too much throughput through an Ethernet. I think they're like 720p maximum or something like that. But that's alright, they're great for running a touchscreen. Now what I've actually got in my motorhome is I've used a really cheap version, it's like, it's like 5 bucks. These are much more expensive. So I think they're going to be useful, so I will keep them on one side. I don't think I'm going to use them for this project. These are relatively expensive, but the one I'm actually using right now is a cheap one. It's like literally 5 bucks on the Express. And that's what I found in the thrift shop <laughs> for a couple of dollars. And it is basically the same as this, well, it's actually like an inline dongle thing. And it's got USB-A on one side, like a female, and a USB-A male on the other side, with an Ethernet port. And that is it. It just goes straight through. <laughs> so, really simple thing. So what I've done there, because I needed more than one port, I needed two, is I've just put a standard USB hub on the other end of it. And plugged it in, and that's actually working, it's powered and everything. So, easy. But that's what I've got these for as well, because these are like a better version of that, high quality. And I've also got a power brick as well. I don't know, maybe it's in focus, maybe it's not. Have a read. Um, my HDMI cable for my monitor is gone, so I'm currently using the tiny little screen on the camera to see what I'm doing. It's not going well. There's a couple of these probes on eBay. One was really expensive and I kept him giving offers and he kept on knocking them back. And it's like, well, it's not going to shift on price. And it would have cost me $500 to get one probe. That's what his price was like. And his shipping price was like $200 for this. Anyway, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Anyway, another guy listed a couple of these. Here it is. And even to give me a deal, actually, I think he, he split the postage price of me, actually. I think he did half the postage price, apparently. It's a probe for the agent test fixture. It's actually in pretty good condition. Now, let's get the actual original. So here's a test fixture which I did a video on a while ago, repairing it. It came with one probe like this, which is here, which I had to repair a little bit, and one clip lead. Now, I managed to get another clip lead. I was thinking, well, having a probe would actually be useful so I can do low resistance tests on a short circuit on a board, right? If you're trying to trace this on a board, sometimes if you have to measure low resistances, you can narrow down roughly where that short is, if it's not obvious. So I thought, right, okay, I'm going to get one. So what it's got on here, these, this plug in, if I can unplug them, and these plug in here. I'll get my original one. There goes sitting way around. There you go, so now I've got a pair of probes. Should test this out, make sure it works okay. So basically these are four wire probes, okay, so inside the tip there, hopefully you can see it, I can't tell if it's focused or not, there's a little spring piece, right, that little wire sticking out, and then you've got the outer. That's what's forming the two wire connection. And then you also got the other probe which has also got two wires, so it's got four wire probing, which is what you need for low resistance and stuff like that. So here we've got a 10 milliohm resistor out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna probe on these terminals like this. Okay, and I can see right now we're getting 10 milliohms. So if I do on both of those to see what we're getting, oh, put them both right. We're getting minus 0 0.01, so it needs, needs adjusting, it needs zeroing, but it's close enough. Let me just show you on the actual screen. So there's a milliohm meter, 
as a probe across a resistor. There we go. Two milli ohms. Working fine. These are some four gauge pre made wires. One's 20 centimetres long, the other one is one metre long. This comes back to me working on Mudhome recently. I did some rewiring and stuff in there. I uh, used up some of the cables I already had. I needed to replace them, so I've got some more. This sort of things, these pre made cables that are handy things to have around if you need to. Like this is a one metre length, you can always cut it down, put another connector on the end to get the length you need. That's something you can always do, consider that. And pre made cables, at least you know they're, they are done nicely. Yeah, they've got proper crimps on them. Hopefully they use the proper machine, things like that. So when I've used these things before, they've been absolutely fine. These, these particular ones have been good. So I think these are actually a decent quality one. And these are four gauge, like I said, so they can do quite well. This is something I got because I thought it could be useful. I saw some of these online and the power ratings on them were ridiculous. They were dreaming. So we've got a couple of spare fuse in there. It's a little mini 220 to 110 volt converter. All right, so this one's, well, input's 240 on this one. So 240 volt in, 110 volt out. Obviously it doesn't change frequency, it's only purely a voltage change because it's just basically a transformer inside there. You can see it through there. All right, nothing too special. But that was not too dissimilar to getting a transformer with the right voltages on it. So I've just got one of them. Obviously it's got these plugs on it, but that's fine. There's lots of different models, and one of them was rated at stupid. This is a 200, so this is 200 watts rated, which is fine. It's alright for just doing small stuff and you know, like a charge or something like that. It's this small. I've already got one which is much smaller than this, it can only do like 50 watts, I think, something like that, maybe not even that. And that's what I've used for years for a little charge, which I got from the US. I want to get a slightly bigger one. Now, I do have my auto transformer sitting off camera over there, which you've probably seen in my videos, that red auto transformer. That's uh, 2000 VA apparently, I don't trust it, but yeah, maybe half that, which is what I use most of the time for anything I need to do voltage conversion. But sometimes you just want something standalone, you just plug it in and go, and that's what I've got this for. I can put this out in my other lab, or maybe in the garage maybe, and use it out there for those devices, and if I need to bring it in here for certain things, I could do that. There's one of these, probably about twice the size, and it is rated at 4000 watts. I thought that's quite impressive, considering it's only got a mains cable on it. Yeah, and, and no, there's no way it could do 4,000 watts. Uh, I don't know where they got that from. Maybe 400 watts. Yeah. So watch, watch out for that, because some of these claims that you see on products are ridiculous. I mean, the claims that they had. This is from a local website, right? Like local auction site. It's not eBay. It's another one called Trade Me. The claims that were made on there were completely wrong. But those claims were also made by the original seller on AliExpress. Well, the AliExpress listings all had the same ratings on them. So obviously. The, person over here may or may not be knowing any better had the wrong ratings on them because that's what's claimed from when he's bought them so it's obviously imported them and he's reselling them which is fine but yeah sometimes that's a really convenient way of getting stuff for not too much money now interestingly not unsurprisingly that fuse on the back of there doesn't have a rating on it. it's nothing saying what that fuse should be to replace the fuse is a one amp yes yeah, probably okay 200 watts or 240 watts yeah so can you guess where this box came from? Actually, I'm going to use a real knife. So this is something I was stocking up with. Little battery holders. So I buy these from overseas and I resell them locally as spare parts for the Farmtech timers. Because these get water damage and things like that. They, their batteries leakage and get corroded and that sort of stuff. So these are often failure points on the equipment. When you need them, you need them. You usually find out at the event that, hey, the battery holder's not working. So I keep a stock of these in the motorhome for working at the events and for just general stock as well. So I thought I'd get a price break by getting 50 of them. This is going to last me years and years, but it means I've got them slightly cheaper, which is good because the prices of everything goes up these days. <laughs> so spent a bit of money on these. This should last me several years in parts at least. I expect it will last me probably at least five years. I don't sell that many of them but recently I sold eight in one go so because I had some equipment down the line there which was giving them trouble and I said it's probably the battery holders. 
rather than sending me all the equipment up and spending a lot of money on postage, I'll just see some new battery holders and we'll see here we go. That was a few months ago now, a couple of months ago, when I sent them those and I haven't heard anything back. So I'm guessing that that was the problem, it was the battery holders. So that saved them some money actually. It actually made it cheaper for them to buy the battery holders off me than it was to send the equipment up to have me look at it. Anyway, that's 50 battery holders. So um, I'll have to buy any more of them for a while. Maybe never. So if you check out the links down below for other videos you might be interested in watching and subscribe over there if you're not already subscribed. And if you want to help support the channel, there's a Patreon link up there. Click on that and join Patreon. It's a couple of dollars a month at least. You help me to buy things from mailbag and buy bits of test equipment and things like that to fix. So I can make videos about them. Catch you later.